In 1657, the first shop selling hot chocolate opened in London. Today, four billion pounds of chocolate is sold in the UK each year. But the size of chocolate bars is shrinking, and they're not the only product affected. Items from crisps to fish fingers have all been made smaller recently, and customers have taken to social media to express their frustration. First, people noticed the size of boxes that have been shrinking over the years. Then came Toblerone Gate with its wider holes, and the public expressing concern that fruit juices are smaller and cereals are shrinking, all offering less product for the same money. Consumers are unaware that some of their favourite products are getting smaller, so we, we want manufacturers and supermarkets to make it clear that when sh products are shrinking so consumers aren't misled. Is this putting a big old fat sticker on, the, on every label possible? Or? Well, yeah, absolutely. Changing the products, changing the labelling and the advertising so consumers are clear when they're picking up the products off the shelves that it's not necessarily the same product that they used to buy. We chose to change the shape to keep the product affordable for our customers and it enables us to keep offering a great value product. We had to make a decision between changing the look of the bars or raising their price. With larger companies hedging against the changing price of oil and the threat of Brexit destabilising the pound by up to 15%, many UK manufacturers say they've been struggling to deliver the same product. Hopefully Brexit won't affect us too much because while the pound may fluctuate, historically there's been currency fluctuations and it makes it much more easy or difficult depending on which way the pound is going for us to buy foreign food. But not all companies have allowed such criteria to affect business. With a 17% increase in gross costs, Nor Chocolate in Norwich refuses to pass that on to the customer. We haven't reduced our packaging sizes, we haven't, um, we haven't reduced our, our product sizes, and in reality we've just compensated. So what we've done is said, okay, yes, we've had an increase in, in costs on, on, for the import of our ingredients, of our packaging, but then we've actually gone out there and got more, more business from outside of Europe. And so it, it, kind of, it kind of compensates itself. So yes, okay, we've taken a loss and our margins have, 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 been, have been hit, most definitely, but we've increased our business. And, and so it, it's a balance in that. While the weaker pound and the increased price of ingredients like cocoa and palm oil is a factor in rising costs, famous UK brands like Cadbury's and Terry's have moved their factories abroad. And although they now trade in the euro, with cheaper labour and packaging costs, shrinkflation still continues. It is very difficult sometimes to compete against European counterparts, European manufacturers, when they have a lot easier ride. While popular soft drinks have been also reducing the size of their cartons, our favourite chocolate bars have been miraculously decreasing in size and all retail at the same price, if not more. So what's to blame? The living wage, the cost of cocoa butter, the fluctuating pound Brexit or just plain greed? Whatever the reason, from Cadbury's fingers to Quality Street, confused customers are slowly waking up to the fact that they are no longer getting value for money they once took for granted. And while austerity might bite, increased costs for importers means that the shrinking trend is likely to continue. Martin Andrews, RTUK, Norwich.